Whether you like it or not, more and more people are switching over to electric cars because of business or whatever, it is happening. September was a record month for the sale of electric vehicles globally and in the UK. Now I know a lot of electricians are still a little bit wary about getting involved in installing EV chargers and that's fair enough, usually down to simply no experience and lack of knowledge. So in this video I'm going to show you everything that you really need to know to get your teeth stuck into it because it's not as complicated as you think. I'm going to run you through like an initial sort of survey, what to look out for to price up one of these jobs. Lots of people aren't so sure about the DNO application. We're going to run through that a little bit later on and calm that concern. And the job that I'm doing today is a nice and simple one. So I thought it'd be a nice intro into what you can expect. And the charger that I'm using is the Hypervolt, which I call the all rounder, nice and easy, basic charger. And if you install this one for your first one, you're not going to go wrong. Here's a few of the things that you really need to be looking out for if you're carrying out a survey for an EV charger. You want to be checking out the cutout, the existing consumer unit, and also if they have solar or battery systems. Also, look at the surrounding area to see where you're going to install your consumer unit. Make sure everything's bonded and think about your cable route. So for this one, I'm putting a new little board in here. There's not a lot of room, but we're going to go out through the wall with the cable there, which is going to pop me out there. I'm going to clip the cable on that line there and up to and that is where the charger is going to go. Now when it comes to what consumer unit to choose to install there's a couple of things that you should really be taking into account. My normal choice is this Proteus one and that's because it has three spare ways inside this. That allows me to future proof this installation for anything extra later on down the line such as an additional EV charger if they're having solar installed, battery storage or just a couple of spare ways if the board's at full capacity. But today, as you've seen, I don't really have a lot of room. It's gonna be a bit of a squeeze. So I'm installing the fuse box one. And in here, I do have still two spare ways and it's just a bit narrower. So just bear in mind, as long as you do a good job, later on down the line, everyone's gonna have two electric cars. And if you've already future-proofed it and told them you future-proofed it, the chances are if they want a second charger, they're gonna call you to come and do it because you know all about it. And before I forget, the breakers you install, 40 amp bi-directional RCBO. Same as the fuse box one is a bi-directional RCBO. And the reason is, again, the whole future proofing thing. If we ever go down the vehicle to grid route, you need a bi-directional RCBO in order for the protection to be relevant for the installation that you're installing. One of the key questions that you should be asking your customers is who is their energy provider? This will determine which EV charger you should suggest for them to have. More and more EV chargers are integrating with Octopus Intelligent, which is the most popular EV tariff that my customers use. So what you wanna do is keep on top of this, keep online and seeing which EV chargers incorporate with Octopus Intelligent. Alternative to this is some vehicles integrate with Octopus Intelligent. So if your customer doesn't like the chargers that you're offering, see if their vehicle incorporates with Octopus instead. The cable that I think you should use is Doncaster Cable's EV Ultra. They do two versions, they do an SWA and a high tough version. I use high tough for most of my installs, unless the cable's been buried. The cable itself is extremely flexible. And inside, this is the six mil. You can get a four mil and you can get 10 mil, three core and five core. And this one has the Cat5 in it with four pairs. I advise getting the one with four pairs over the cable with two pairs because one with two pairs limits you only to connecting up the CT. If you find yourself in a situation where they cannot get Wi-Fi to the charger, you're gonna to have to hardwire that internet connection. And with this, you can use one pair for the CT and the three other pairs to hardwire an ethernet connection. So just get this cable and you're covering all bases and don't buy the third party stuff. It's Doncaster Cables EV Ultra or it's not EV Ultra. Right, let me show you what I've done in the cupboard. I've managed to squeeze the consumer unit in that corner there. And if you notice, I've got a little orange junction box there, and that is for my CT connections. So that's ready to go. What I've done with the EV Ultra is it goes into the consumer unit and then the Cat5 then comes out of that stuffing gland at the bottom and into there. Just keeps those terminations outside of the consumer unit. And I haven't used the existing consumer unit because inside here, First of all, we have no spare ways. Second of all, it's a split load board. For the young'uns, what that means is this RCD is protecting so many circuits and this RCD is protecting so many circuits, so it's split. I also have no room for surge protection inside there. 
Now, if you don't know this, EV chargers should not be on a shared RCD. So you can't put your EV charger on a split load board unless you can put an RCBO next to the main switch, which you can't do on all boards because you have to have that separate neutral bar. So watch out for that. You're better off installing a secondary consumer unit that's metal surge protection up to date rcd protection and the installation is kept separate from the rest of the install of the house so you're taking responsibility of the new stuff that you've installed and i'll show you the ct connection later on when i've got it out of the box this installation is the ideal installation but you may come across other installs where customers want different things such as if they have a detached garage which is already fed by, let's say, a six mil cable, can you install an EV charger there? There are other complications around these installations, and if you want to know more about those, leave your comments below, and I will address all of these questions that you may have to put you at ease. So where I said this is sort of like a beginner unit, if you like, it's it's not really a beginner unit, it's, it's just easy to set up and everything. They're all relatively the same, just different cable entries and things like that. But, but, this is nice and easy it's one that if you recommend to your customers it's going to time with ovo it's going to time with octopus it works with solar and battery you've got a choice of five or seven and a half or a 10 meter tethered lead to offer your clients and a color choice of white black and space gray it ticks a lot of boxes you're going to find it hard to go wrong with this and inside here simply there you have your line neutral and earth terminals your CT connection's got a little plug in there. I'll show you that later. And you have a little dial here for your load curtailment to set it. So if you've got like a 60 amp fuse, for example, I would limit that to 50 amps. Nice and simple. This is the CT clamp, which I will show you where I connect that later on, but it's around the meter tails. And this charger comes with a holster for the plug as well. A little bag of screws. And that's about it. As easy as that. That is the connection for the Cat5 inside the charger. Now all you need to do is get your EV Ultra to the charger. On this wall, I am using screws and wall plugs purely because it's rendered. And if I use my spit gun on it, it's definitely going to blow. So these are the D-line clips you've just seen me use. And I'm not using the spit gun because basically where this is a rendered wall, the nails would just blow it apart and I wouldn't get a good fix in. There's two types of D-line clips. One that looks like that and one that looks like that. I prefer these ones personally. You can get a more variety of cables to fit this one. And if you're gonna do a job like this, just use good materials. That gives you a much cleaner finish than a cleat. Cleats just look rubbish. So let's all up our game and give the customers the best finish we possibly can. My next tip is when you're pulling the cable through, never pull the cable through the wall, which is going to the charger because it will scratch the cable and it looks rubbish. So make sure you do it the other way around and give the cable a good clean off before you fix it to the wall. Something that I wanna to touch on is the whole quoting for these jobs. My personal experience and how I think what I know can help you out this is not a sales pitch. I'm genuinely trying to help you out and give you advice. All right. I don't carry out site visits anymore for any of my EV charging installs. And that's purely because, and what you're going to find is lots of people who buy electric cars don't know anything about it. So what they really need is like a tutorial on what's going on, which is why I make these videos so customers can see what's going on. And then they already know what they want before they contact me. When I started doing this, I found myself spending an awful lot of time with customers explaining everything, all the different charges, how it works, what to do, et cetera, et cetera. Driving around, doing the surveys like you would any normal job, but it's a bit more involved because you're trying to sell a product as well. So I just use OpenQuote now. I will put a link for this in the description below. And what it is, it's a remote survey software. I, I, I kid you not, all of my jobs that I win, I use this software for. And the customer goes around and they take photos of the cutout, the bonding, the cable route from the consumer unit to where they want the EV charger, pictures of inside the meter box, everything, it's all there, everything that you would look at if you were carrying out the job, apart from you haven't had to go there and waste your time, fuel, etc., etc. And where I used to carry out so many of these surveys, when I totaled it up, I nearly gained an entire day a week, which is incredible. I think it's the modern way to quote jobs and I really think that you should look at it. Once your customer has filled out that inquiry form, the next thing that you need to do is download the Tradeify app. It is the software that is gonna transform your business. All that information that you've gathered on that survey, take it straight over to Tradeify and open up those templates that you've made. On those templates, you're gonna have all of the list materials for these jobs because it's pretty standard. And all you have to do is at the bottom, change 
the EV chargers and the one that you're not quoting for, just deselect it and your quote is built. You can literally quote in about two or three minutes. Time is money and money is time. So let's save as much time as we possibly can in order to make as much money as we possibly can. That is what business is all about. You can literally do everything on your mobile phone if you're not too computer way inclined. Quoting, invoicing, scheduling, it's all there. Easy peasy. Give it a go. Start your free trial with Tradify right now with my promo code SOTA30. 30% 30 off your first three months. But before that, you get a two week free trial. Why not just give it a go? Right, back to the video. Once you've done all your dead testing, you can connect it up and you can see the CT connections there. Easy peasy. Then all you have to do is put the front cover on. Mark where your holster's gonna go and fix it to the wall. To commission this EV charger, you need to download the Hypervolt app, which looks like this. Basically follow the instructions, connect it to the internet. This keeps going off, it's dead easy. Don't worry about it, just make sure you've got your customer's Wi-Fi ID and their email ready. Give the cable a good wipe, wrap it up, and then we're nearly done. I wanna have a quick chat about the outdoor consumer unit thing. When it first came out, it seemed like a wonderful idea and I've done a couple myself, but I haven't done them in years. And that's because of what I've learned about them. And now like the likes of Napit have released that it is an absolute last resort and you really shouldn't be doing it. So if you are doing it, I suggest you stop doing it. It is supposed to be a last resort. And I'm seeing so many people out there doing these installs where they're just prioritizing it and doing it that way, putting an outdoor consumer unit in next to the meter box because it's the easiest way to do the job. And it's cheaper and you think you're gonna win the work, but look, I've taken out some of these outdoor consumer units now after three years and they've been completely corroded. These installs are not lasting long. And think about it, with this British weather that we have, are you really surprised that it's already corroding? So look, just stop doing it. If your customers want that install, they're not the right customer, don't do it. You're gonna dig yourself an early grave basically, just don't do it. Now when you're installing an EV charger, you should be notifying the DNO and if you go on the ENA Connect website portal, this is dead easy to do. This used to be a bit, little bit problematic, but like any problem that comes along, someone also follows that and comes up with a better way to smoothen out that process. So there's absolutely no excuse not to do this. Just put in Google ENA Connect Direct and this website will come up. Now all you have to do is create an account, put your business in there, your company name, etc., etc. It couldn't be easier. Verify your account and then you're gonna need an authenticator app to complete the setup. Next, select that you're an installer and complete the company registration. Once this is all done, select what you're installing. In this case, I'm installing an EV charger AC and simply complete the form. Now what I can do is a proper step-by-step -step on how to complete this application form if you're not really sure but honestly, it couldn't be easier. But if you do feel like you need that, leave it in the comments below and I'll make sure I get it done. Inside here, we can see the CT mounted on the line conductor on the meter tails after the meter, but before any Henny blocks. And that is that. This charger really couldn't be simpler to install. There's a huge opportunity here for everyone to install these and make some money. It is a growing industry, whether you like it or not, whether you're against electric cars or whatever, I don't really care. If you're an electrician, I'm just telling you that there's a business opportunity for you here and there's nothing to be scared of. Subscribe to my channel.